Hi everybody! I'm so excited. I can't contain myself. I don't care what the weather's doing outside because I grow orchids and I'm so addicted and I'm very thankful for my subscribers because they help me all the time. <laughs> for instance, I had that blue blue pot. I took my orchids out and someone said, won't that make a good bird feeder? And I'll show you it later because it does. It's outside. And most of all, my cymbidiums. And the funny thing is, I didn't realize till I brought them in the house. They're scented. In the greenhouse, I just never noticed and I'm carrying them in at, from the greenhouse. And I, oh my goodness, and I get them in here and yes, they're scented. I am so happy and I have to thank Damien in Australia and there's so many people out there that say I wish I could show you my orchids and sometimes to some people I say you know why don't you start a YouTube you don't have to make it for everybody you can make it for your own uh, you know, reference. You can go back and look at when you repotted something, what it looked like, what you put in it, how damaged it was, and then you can watch it over the time. And you could even put them all together over time and you have a beautiful setup of how well you did when you grew your own orchids. Now, that being said, um, said the Damien in Australia sent a short video of his beautiful orchids and I seen the cymbidiums and I thought, oh, and I talked about them before and, and I've had these, now I have to explain, um, I've had these cymbidiums for at least three years. They, they were just grass. And I went to this garage sale, and a lady had them in the garage sale. She didn't know what they were or anything. There was no label. And she said they haven't been able to do anything. She just moved up here from the coast, and that's how I got them. So I knew nothing. So first year went by, nothing happened. Second year or third year, I've lost track of time. It got some little spikes. It looked like it was going to do something, and they just dried up. I had them in the house. So I did read that uh, uh, they like it cooler. So in the back bedroom, I we have a big window with a shelf and it faces south. So I thought, well, maybe that it wasn't cool enough. So anyway, I was looking at a video he sent and jealous as anything and out on his patio in Australia, in the winter are these beautiful cymbidiums. Mama and I were looking at them and oh, oh, we, it was just terrible. So I was getting, uh, I was hanging in there because I know how beautiful they were. But you know, sometimes when you show a person a video or something, you know, you might not realize just something simple can set them off to a good idea. Because I seen them, it was winter out in the patio, and I thought, okay, every, every, uh, as soon as in the spring that it's not freezing anymore, I move them out to the east side of my house, near the tap, it's right near everything where we go up on the other patio. So they get lots of winter all summer. I always haul a bucket of the same fertilizer. I give my orchids out there every week or whatever it is I'm doing. And they get that and uh, they just sit out there. And it can be over a hundred, it can be raining every day, it can be whatever. They just sit there. And the leaves are a good color because they're not dark green, so they've had enough light. That's one way of telling. So that part was all good, but bringing them in the house come Halloween, that's what Brad at Brad's Greenhouse would say, come Halloween or something. And I have watched all kinds of videos and information and tried and tried. So I thought, wow. This year it was starting to freeze 
and I had them in the solarium for a while. And then I thought, well, it's going to freeze. It freezes out there. So I put them in the greenhouse. And I was so excited when I saw the first spikes. But here we are. They're beautiful. I'm so happy. It made my day. <laughs> and bonus, there was two pots. The other pot's still out there. And it's got five spikes. It's the same color. And... Um, they're doing really good. They're starting to open. So, you know, a month from now, I can bring the other one in. And yes, they do take up a lot of room, but they're only in your house when they're in bloom. So, and some people I've read, they might keep them in a colder garage. Say, our greenhouse is between 40 and 50. On a sunny afternoon, even in the winter, the daytime, it warms up because we have three layers of plastic over it, plus insulation on the sides. So the, the daytimes warm up, but it's cold at night, which they do not mind whatever. So if you have a garage or an upstairs room or somewhere where there's light, because light is essential to getting these. And I'm not an expert, I'm just saying what I did. So, um, anyway, uh, a room that has light, or you can give some light, they like lots of light, and where it's cold, 40, 50, 55, 60 maybe, not too much higher, because then you're getting to house temperature, and it'll be too much. So, and then, as soon as they bloom, and, and I did go back and look at Brad's greenhouse, as somebody suggested, because, and I sent him a little note, and he said, well, don't bring them in until the buds are open. Now, I've heard different stories, so I, I was scared to try, because, okay, this is the first live, this is why I'm excited. This is the first live cymbidium I have ever seen. I have seen uh, YouTube and books in, on uh, the computer. I have never, ever seen a live cymbidium. This is why I'm so happy. And uh, now I know what to do. I'm hoping to do this every year. Doesn't it brighten up the winter? Yes, it does. And I'm actually thinking of giving out a little party invitation when I bring out bring out the big one in and having a few of the ladies in the neighborhood come in and see the orchids and give them an early spring too. So that's on the agenda. So anyway, you guys, if you're out there, always leave a comment. You never know how something you say will help somebody else. Lots of people read those comments. And uh, word travels and people learn and that's what this is all about. I'm not, I'm not in it to make money. I'm not gonna, we're not rich. 90% uh, of our stuff is probably from a garage sale. <laughs> but I just wanna share, that's all I wanna do. I wanna share and have fun. So uh, that's what I like to do. And some people go through and read all the comments and. And everybody learns and everybody can have fun and eventually you'll find something that works for you. So anyway, I do, uh, there's so many nice things I want to show you now. The orchids aren't all in full bloom, but I just finished my watering day and I used blue algae today, seaweed extract, because it's a six day and that was added onto our watering schedule that I often post under the video. So, um, I want to take you for a tour. Hope you caught some of my happiness. And yes, orchids, anybody can do them. And the other thing I'm kind of happy about is I haven't gotten so deep in with orchids that I can't do the job. It's enjoyable. I put my music on. I had to turn it off for... for uh, so I could do this, but believe it or not, I had the blues on, and I wasn't blue, but anyway, um, just 
it's it's such an enjoyable hobby so you just have to be patient and hang in there ask lots of questions and learn and you find just what's right for your area so now uh, so I gotta stop and make pizza and we're gonna celebrate <laughs> but I wanted to give you a tour and uh, I'll try and go slow there's a few things I want to show you that are also surprises. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate you all so much and everything you've taught me. So here we go. I don't have this Mr. Running, but I do want to give you a close up. A close up. Oh, they say that if they get a right amount of light, that they get a better color and sometimes if the light is is not bright enough they'll get a muddy green color but I think mine had lots of light and uh, so at a garage sale I got these cake stands someone used to make cakes and and they had two there this one and uh, the other ones in the other room and uh, it makes a nice stand. And why does it help? Because it's narrow at the bottom, so you can get orchids close together, but not so much their leaves are all touching. So if you have a spot where you've got some height, whether it's an upside down vase with a plate on it or whatever. Oh, I didn't put a saucer under this and water's leaking. Lucky we tiled this, but I'll get to that. I just watered it when I brought it in. Or bit a bit too heavy I would never carry it so um this one's opening and of course the minis in the back you know this is the other beauty you've got your orchids once you start uh their flowering start from you then they're going to be open for four months or more I've had them five months so um yes and this is, I call Tequila Sunrise. It suffered for a while. It was one with those ripply leaves, but you know, even the, the limp leaves that hang on, they do help out. So, of course, here's the one I repotted in the last video, and sometimes I'll take something like this, I'm trying to support it and get it to to stay up rather than hang over. So I'll sometimes do that till it sets its feet after repotting. Okay. Now some, they just don't have, some of the ones that may have been struggling or haven't had too long and they suffered. If they don't have enough leaves, you won't get a spike. You need at least like four leaves or, or two leaves and a spike comes underneath so of course we got this one now I have to show you remember I just did that repotting and I used the fruit tree well I'll wait till you see so this one this one here this is just loaded with blooms yeah and this was, I called Angel Wings because she struggled and struggled. She had scale and everything, but now finally it's doing good. Although I think it got the cold. It looks like one little bud is going to blast. Okay, now this is the one I repotted in the last video, remember? And it had two buds. The buds did not blast and it's opened. So, it, it must be okay. It didn't have too much shock. So, there we go. So, now we're going to go in the other room. I had to put the piano table, the piano stool on the table to shoot this video because uh, it's hard shooting into the window because it's too dark. And I do have one little... Um, Orchid over here. And, and a little frog. I brought him in from outside. He was freezing and he's so happy too. 
<laughs> okay, let's go look at the other ones. Oh, and I'm celebrating with an umbrella in my lemon water, and it is just lemon water, but eh, it's a treat. <laughs> Umbrellas make me happy. <laughs> Okay, and in this window in bloom, of course, we have Moon Glow outdoing herself. Yeah. And we have, I've turned all the blooms in, and when the video's done, I'll go around and turn them all out because uh, I just wanted to show you. Sometimes at night when mom's coming up for supper, I go around and do the same thing so she can have a good look how they're doing. And once they're all open, then I leave them, I leave them in. I'm surprised to see this one spiking. It struggled to, had a few problems, but it was so beautiful when I did it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing it. So yes, you guys. Hang in there. It's so rewarding. Very enjoyable. Now, um, this one's been struggling too. I'm not expecting too much from it, but it'll be fine. And here we have new leaves coming. I haven't checked the roots yet. But, uh, and in here you might see this one. Yeah, new leaves coming. So remember, it had no roots. They were at a standstill. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping. Hi, Maggie. Everybody wants to see you. There you go. Are you a good girl? Huh? Okay, everybody. I have to go get that pizza and start making it for lunch. And hope you have a great day. And gee, catch some of this happiness. I am happy. <laughs>